RMR, which stands for Recurring Monthly Revenue, is a lifeline for any service-based business, especially for a fire alarm company. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how you can take over any fire alarm system and connect it to your central station to boost your RMR. So in this presentation, I'm gonna show you how you can take over a fire alarm system communicator and add your own communicator and then add new accounts to your fire alarm company so that way you can build up your profile and make passive income on a monthly basis. So the first thing you wanna do is when you uh, get a call from a customer to go out and check a fire alarm system for a new activation, you wanna inspect the system. You wanna jot down to make sure if they have any troubles, any existing troubles, you wanna make sure the system is clear and free of any troubles. Then you wanna make sure you can get into the program menu. Usually these systems will have a default password that you can get into, two, 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 twos, or threes, or fours, or ones, or zero, sixes, whatever it is, you have to figure out what the password is so that way you can actually go inside the menu and then change the account number and then receiver number so you can point those receivers to your new central station. This is usually the case if you have a fire alarm system connected on POTS line, which is just regular landlines. And if that's not the case, like if you can get into it, then you could just make those program adjustments and you don't have to add any additional equipment to connect this system to your central station. But if you can't get into the password, if you don't know the password and you can't get into the menu to change the information on the inside to point it to your central station, then you would have to use an IP dialer or a dialer capture communicator. One of the ones we use is the Napco Starlink, either the SLE Max 2 Fire, the plastic one. This is good, but I would suggest using the metal enclosure because usually in New York City, the phone lines have to be encased in pipe from DMARC to the fire alarm panel. So if your Starlink Max is located in the basement or if it's located 5, 15, or 20 feet away from the panel, you're going to have to pipe that to the fire alarm panel. So it just looks better if you have a metal enclosure versus a plastic enclosure. So this right here will be an option if you cannot get the password to get inside of the fire alarm system. You will put an external DAC, configure this DAC, pay the services, add your charges. This also will help you with RMR as well when it comes to adding your services, your monitoring services, and charging your monitoring services, or rather how much your monitoring services will actually cost. So look into getting yourself some NACO Starlink communicators to help you out with your fire alarm takeover. Let's get back to the presentation. So now if you install in an IP communicator, you must understand that number one, the 24 volts or the main power will come from the fire alarm panel. So you also have to encase that in pipe as well. And that has to be in a separate pipe from the pipe that you're running for the network cables or the phone line cables. Now, if it's using IP, you will want to connect this to the customer's router or switch so that way this can communicate via IP, send signals over the IP communicator and also over the cell communicator. This communicator has four types of communication. It has phone line one, phone line two, IP, and also cell. And remember, the phone line one and two will be monitored by the fire alarm's internal DAC the cell and the IP has to be monitored by modules and this also has to be tested by the fire department to ensure that each form of communication is monitored for supervision. If you're using the customer's or the client's router or their switch, that needs to be hooked up to a battery backup. Everything connected to the fire alarm system needs to be backed up with some type of battery. So if you lose main power, communication will still be able to go out. So once you determine if you need a communicator or not, you want to make sure you identify where the customer's router is, where the internet connection is, because you're going to have to run phone lines from the communicator to the fire alarm panel, and you're going to have to run an internet connection from their router to also the communicator. So each one of those have to be in separate pipes running to their locations. It's best to put the communicator by the main panel, but if you can't do so, that's fine. As long as it's able to connect to the internet and as long as it's able to have good cellular communication, you will be fine. 
So once you survey the system, you gathered up all your information, you know how much wire, pipe, if you need it or not, you will go back and then you will gather up all the necessary information. How much pipe do you need? How much wire do you need? How much all the equipment is gonna cost for you to prepare your quote? And also how long is it gonna take for you to actually install the system, set up the paperwork for the client to submit to Central Station and test all of these signals to Central Station to ensure that all of the communications work. In addition to that, you're gonna have to get the communicator approved by the fire department. So when you take over a system, you wanna keep in mind that you have to have the fire department inspect this. So that's also a cost you wanna add into your calculation. So when you're presenting this to this client, everything is added into your proposal so that way you're getting paid for everything you need to get paid for all the way from whatever equipment you need to buy to the final inspection and also the paperwork you have to prepare so some of the paperwork you would need is a spreadsheet or some type of tool that can keep all of your clients list usually if you have a third party company with a central station they will have a database that you can add all of your clients and you can export that information if need be you could send emails to your central station through their email portal, give them your account number that they assign you with and give them any changes within that email request. You will have a central station monitoring agreement that you and the client will have to sign and also the central station will have to sign in order for you to add that account to the central station and to make it active. You will wanna store your information on a drive that's accessible for whomever's gonna be filing this paperwork to the central station, that designated person who's going to be, you know, creating the accounts, giving out the account numbers, following up with the payments and monitoring and managing the, all of the central station accounts. Each document needs to be filled out, either sent electronically or hard copy to the client. And then once we get the paperwork back, the original documents need to be sent back to the monitoring station for activation. We use Zoho Sign to send out all of our documents. You can use Adobe Sign or whatever process or electronic signature services that you use to expedite the process. You can use that as well. Just make sure you send that document over to the central station when you activate in the account. So once we receive the approval from the customer, they make the payment, they make the deposit, we get some form of payment. We then will have to fill out a TB60 form. This form is for the fire department terminal. They need to understand what type of signals are being sent to them. So if you have a system that has manual pull stations, then that's a manual activation. If you have a system that has manual pull stations and smoke, that's a manual auto, then, you know, sprinkler and CO. So all of these different signals that's being sent or transmitted from the fire alarm system needs to be identified on that TB60. You will fill that TB60 out and send that over to your central station. They will put their information, send it over to the fire department for approval. Once you get that approval, now this account is fully active. It's active with the central station, and now the fire department know what type of signals is being sent, what the location is, and the cross streets, and they know how to get there if there's any emergencies that arrive from this panel. Or false alarms as well. So like I said, we use the NAPCO, IP cell dual path fire alarm communicator. This is the one we use to take over all our fire alarm panels. So rather we have a password or not, this is the one we're using, unless the system is already on phone line. And at that point, I would definitely figure out the password or either backdoor password or either the manufacturer's default password, whatever it is, I will get into the system to change the account number and also the receiver number so that way I can point it to my central station. And once we do that, you have to program or connect to the NAPCO IP dialer via the IP portal and configure the central station. You can either do, you know, set up a default alarm so that way the dialer capture module or this NAPCO IP cell can capture the information coming from the fire alarm panel, or you could just put the account number and central station information in there as well so that way it can transmit the signals or relay the signals over to your central station. You must test all of the signals from phone lines to batteries, all the smoke detectors, the duct detectors, the pole stations, troubles on a horn strobe circuit. You need to verify that this system you're taking over is 100% fully functional. You don't wanna have any devices out there that are not working. So if you find devices that are not working, you need to identify those devices, let the customer know, and then submit a quote how you can fix those devices. So once you get or scheduled for the final inspection, you're gonna need an activity report. The prior week or 30 days of activity for this fire alarm system. You're gonna need 
a copy of the base building fire alarm letter of approval, a copy of that approved TB60 you submitted. These documents you will send over to your expediter or your fire alarm engineer too, or you can do it yourself when you go to the fire department to submit these forms. You have to know how much time do you need, two weeks, three weeks, whatever time frame you're looking for the inspection, weekdays, holidays, how fast you want the inspection, Mondays, after hours, whatever your time frame is, you wanna let them know that so that way they could block out the dates and give you an inspection. Just make sure that you test all of your devices to ensure that this system is fully functional and your monitoring account is fully active with the Sentry Station. You will then get a B45 with the inspector who's gonna come out there and also the date and time. My name is Anthony Richardson. I'm the president of Secure Securities. If you have any questions about Fire Alarm, we are here to help you 24 hours a day. You can hit us up on an email at info at securitysecurities.com. You can call us directly at 845-445-6446. You can hit the chat box on our website, or you can contact us on any social media platform at Secure Securities, except Twitter. It's called securities underscore court. So this has been a presentation of how you can boost your RMR by taking over central stations, and I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.